Hi, this is Karen White of Divine Time Astrology and another Monday Moon message on a writer, a very prolific writer, Alan Watts. One of you asked me to do a chart on Alan Watts or Aldous Huxley, which I'll probably do next time. So here it is. Alan Watts was a British uh, philosopher. He had been a priest at one time. He's a writer, a speaker, and he's written 25 books and articles on Eastern and Western religion. He's been thought of as a person who was bringing Eastern thought to Westerners. So let's look at his chart and see how that shows up. Well, first of all, we look at his Atmakarika. What you see right here is Saturn. Saturn is in Gemini, and we'll talk a bit about that too. Aspected by the Moon and Venus. And if you remember to be a writer, you need to have the Moon aspected by, with, or ruled by either Mercury, Venus, or Jupiter. And we see the Moon here is ruled by Mercury and aspected by Venus. And we also need to have the third house lord, the fifth house lord, and the ninth house lord involved. The third house is for the hard work of writing. And as we see here, the third sign from the ascendant, we're not paying attention to the cusps, which, which is what these little numbers are. This is Jaimini, the sign-based technique. And it is an Aquarius, which means it's ruled by Saturn. So here's Saturn, aspected by the moon and Venus. And then the fifth house is the house of creativity. And we want that involved too. Well, it's in Aries, so it's ruled by Mars. Mars is in Capricorn, which means it's ruled by Saturn. Here's Saturn, aspected by the moon and Venus. And then finally, the ninth house for teaching and telling tales. And it is in Leo, which is ruled by the sun in Capricorn, ruled by Saturn, aspected by the moon and Venus. So there you go. He has everything that you need. And the interesting thing, too, about Venus is that it has a lot to do with the type of writing that he did. So Venus is a person who, oh, well, let me back up here a bit. Because Venus and the moon are aspecting the Atmakarika, Saturn, <clears throat> this means that Venus and the moon and Saturn are all a part of who he is. He's not just Saturn. So this means he is also Venus. Well, Venus is a professor, a teacher. And uh, Venus is the planet that's able to see meaning where there is none. And he was able to translate Eastern religion so that Westerners can understand it. Venus is a scholar, and he was a teacher of philosophy. And the other thing that he said, too, that I thought was so interesting is that Venus also rules the entertainment field. And when one of his colleagues criticized him for his work, he said that he didn't really think of himself as a philosophy professor. He thought of himself as a philosophical entertainer. Now, another thing about Moon-Venus combinations is that it makes you very popular with the public. And Alan Watts was very influential in his time, and he still is. In fact, if you come over here to the Navamsha and you look at where his Amakarika is, it's in Gemini. And this means that many people who have their Amakarika in the sign of Gemini, in the Navamsha, have fame lasting long after their death. And he does. Most people, you mentioned Alan Watts, they know who he is. Being a teacher requires... Venus being part of either the Atmakarika, 
or a couple of other career placements in the chart, plus it needs to have the second house lord involved. Well, as we see here, the second house lord is Saturn. And he is Saturn. That is his Atmakarika planet. And then the third houses are important too. So we've got the third house, Aquarius, ruled by Saturn. And then the ninth house is involved. And that is Leo, which is ruled by the Sun, and Capricorn, ruled by Saturn. So his chart is pretty straightforward when it comes to being a writer, for sure. He's also been married several times. I believe it was five times. And that is expressed with the Saturn-Venus opposition and the Saturn-Venus-Moon combination. Now, if you go over here to this little table, we see that Venus, so this is the, the line of the moon here, and this is Venus. It's aspecting the moon, 37 out of 60 points. So it's not as bad as it could be. But nevertheless, a person who has moon Venus aspecting each other, they tend to have a harder time finding happiness in relationships. And that's because the moon is about getting your personal needs met, and Venus is about the needs of the relationship and an even exchange of energy and so when these two planets are in relationship to each other, the person has a hard time balancing that personal needs and the needs of the relationship. But it does make them popular with the public. It's almost like they do better evolving through one of the two paths. There's the one is evolving through the one-on-one -on -one path, which is marriage and relationship. And the other one is the path of the one on many. And he definitely had quite an audience. I would say he still does. Another fascinating thing about his chart is where Rahu is and what planet it's with. When you have Rahu-Jupiter combinations, it means that the native is in need of defining their belief system and their purpose. This is like basically the, the task of their lifetime. And that is what he did. Not only that, but it being in the third house has to do with testing it and uh, deciding for themselves what they believe rather than just believing what they, what they grew up in or whatever their spiritual tradition says they need to believe. And he was definitely a person who tested his beliefs through trial and error and to find out what really worked for him. And he was also quite a um, skillful person. And it helps him when you have Rahu in the third. Um, it's a good place to have Rahu or Mars or Saturn or K2 if you are a writer, because it helps you to do the hard work of writing. Now, K2 in the ninth also has to, shows that, um, that he has, he's quite broad in his approach to life and his understanding. So the opposite point, Rahu in the third, means that he has to focus and narrow his approach so that he can, excuse me, successfully complete what's most important to him. I recommend that you Google Alan Watts and look at the books that he has published and I am sure that you will have seen several of them, even if you're young, because he is that well known. So this has been Karen White of Divine Time Astrology. Until next time, good night.